We are going to be breaking down what I consider the biggest storylines of the year. Uh, Yuli, Silas, by all means, please jump in if you do have anything. Um, and we'll discuss each one. And we'll kind of just go through it. I think the first one, this is in no particular order. No particular order. Okay. Um, but the first one, I'm going to start with AB winning four mm -hmm. times. I mean, here's a guy that we have been saying it seems like for the last three years oh man if he can just figure it out if he can just make a win if he if he can just putt under pressure if he could just and all of a sudden he figured it out and it wasn't just hey i got one win awesome no 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 he won four times now he kind of cooled off a little bit towards the end of the season but by god did he figure it out at the beginning and he came out fast played great and it, again it wasn't one of those things where he was winning tournaments that other people weren't at it wasn't one of those things where you know he didn't really have a big name chasing him down it's like all right well he was no he won against the best people when the best people were playing so that i think is the first one ab winning four times this season do you think there's something to like players coming out super hot in the beginning of the season is there something to like where they live? The fact that they can yes. play all off season. Do you think yes. that's a real thing? Yeah. Cause I, I mean, do. It's, it's very similar to what we had at ultimate Frisbee too. We, um, we, one of the two biggest programs why I was playing ultimate Frisbee were us at Florida and Wisconsin and Wisconsin, they would practice, you know, our, the off season or the ultimate Frisbee schedule starts roughly around the same it's kind of almost the same schedule as disc golf. Like it starts around the same amount of time now only mm -hmm. goes till I think May, but normally around like October, November is when you start doing like preseason, but the season doesn't really start until February, right? Mm -hmm. February, I believe was like the first big tournament every year. And Wisconsin always didn't look that great. And it's why, well, they're throwing in a arena all winter. Right, yeah. like it's so yeah. cold up there, and there's yeah, it's inches terrible. of yeah. snow on the ground. You can't play outside, and I think it's I think it's a hundred percent a big factor for a lot of these guys. And it's not so much they start. I think they start playing bad. I don't think that's it. I think it's a lot of people. It takes it takes a few weeks yeah. for them to kind of no, get I their agree. legs yeah. under them. Yeah, for sure. Because I, I I remember thinking the same thing. I lived in Arizona, so I'd play all off season, and I'd typically start off pretty good and i remember being like oh this these guys aren't playing good this is kind of weird and then as the season went on you know what i mean everybody kind of started started playing well but at what point do like do you think that gannon's like thinking yeah i need to move to a good climate so i can play all the time uh-huh yeah he's gotta be no, right i mean if i was if i was gannon's age i would 100 percent buy a house in florida or in Arizona or something, you know, yeah. because I, I, I've, I've done off seasons now, one in Lynchburg and a couple now in Dallas, even Dallas is not great. I mean, no, they're bad. Yeah. For those that, for those that think that going out and playing disc golf in 30 degrees with a bunch of jackets and gloves and all that, it's you, awful. you're not, I, never, you're, I don't think I've ever done it. You're not actually getting better. No, because with disc golf, it's all about timing right? It's all about getting your timing down. It's all about um, the feel of having the feel of the disc. You can't feel the disc and <laughs> you're not throwing anywhere near full capa capacity. No, and the disc doesn't travel as far. And like, you, it's like, I think it's like anything. Like I've never been a really good cold player mm -hmm. until like later on in my career where I had to then adjust because you have to learn how to play in the cold. You have to learn what your new speed is, how far the disc is going, where the flip is. And those are all things that are like really tough. Cause you can't, like you said, you can't feel the disc. So you're almost like planning on a shank flip. If that yes. makes anything, you're yeah, like it's... shanking it down the line and then you're like, okay, it's not going to flip at the right point. So now I have to go super understable. I mean, there's a lot of things that kind of go into it. I was watching a clip the other day of, uh, it was, Phil Mickelson talking about um, 
how far the ball travels and with different lies and different conditions and wind and everything. And he goes through it with uh, whoever was hosting. I think it was a podcast or it was an interview or something. Mm-hmm. And he goes through it and he has like seven answers in a row and he gets super in, in depth in like how he thinks about it and how like three yards means like a lot and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, we have to deal with that too. And in order to learn that stuff, you got to play a long time because then you have to adjust for the cold. You have to Mm -hmm. adjust for however you're feeling that day. You have to adjust for all these little minor things. And I think that's what makes really great players. Great is because they, they do that kind of on the fly. And I think newer players struggle with that a little bit, like wind conditions and the way that it flies and maybe the more, the morning it doesn't fly as far. So you got to adjust for that. And then as you warm up through the day or whatever, or maybe you don't have a good warm up session, like, I don't know, feeling it out, I think is something that's never talked about and is super important. That is one aspect of disc golf that is more difficult than golf is, you know, when it's cold in golf, you're really just adjusting for, all right, I'm not hitting my seven iron 200 yards yeah, it's anymore. A distance I'm hitting thing. 190. In disc golf, discs are flying differently now. You're yeah. not getting as much spin or power on it. And so they're not just going shorter. But now disc that normally would flip up for you is not flipping up at all because you're not able to get it up to speed. So that is actually an area I, I would agree with you there. That is an area that's a little bit more challenging. Um, all right, my next one, biggest storylines of the 2024 year, Isaac Robinson going back to back. Absolutely. I think with all the talk about how more ch- how much more challenging the field is now more than ever. Uh, how many players are, you know, how many people week in and week out actually have the chance to win is just growing and growing year after year. And to be able to go to the tournament that everyone circles as the most important, the tournament that they want to win, and to be able to go there and win it your first time last year and then come in this season as a defending champ and have all that pressure on you and and honestly, not really have that great of a season leading up to it. It wasn't like he was, you know, winning all, all these tournaments and having a great season. And to do it again, I mean, I, that's definitely one of the biggest storylines of the year. No, it is. And the question is, does he have what it takes to do it a few more times? Because then if he can do it, if he can do it two two. Two more times, we're talking about a top five player of all time. If he three you know? repeats, he's in the category of what? Paul Ken? That's yeah, it? That's it. Yeah. Oh. And there's not a lot of people with two world championships anyway. No. You know, Let it's alone two in a crazy in a row. elite category. But what I'm saying is if he can get a couple more worlds. Yeah. We're talking about an all timer. And that's kind of crazy because he came out of nowhere when he first won, had a great season, wins the world championship. And I know what everybody was thinking because I thought it. All right, he got his. He's going to win a few more times on tour. Mm -hmm. But I never thought, especially with how he was playing the second year, like, okay, yeah, he's the guy that's going to win the world championship. So it just just didn't cross my mind. And now he's in in the spot of where I'm like, oh my gosh, he's about to do something special if he can if he gets two out of the next four years and he's done it at two different venues, right? Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. GMC or, you know, green Valley or however you want to call it, <laughs> whatever you want to call it up there, green mountain with the Fox run and Brewster, both very short courses, very short, one wooded one in the open. Then you go to Lynchburg and you do it at new London, a very long wooded course. And then you do it at Ivy Hills, a very long open course. It didn't matter. He did it. He did it for both. Yeah. So very impressive stuff. Um, all right. So we talked a lot about winning. We got to talk about not winning because this was a big storyline. Paul McBeth not winning in the 2024 season. Absolutely. You know, I think, I don't know what the odds would have been coming into this season, but I'm pretty sure everyone would have hammered the, at least, you know, the over, if it was Paul winning a tournament 0.5, you know, over under, I think everyone's hammering the over. That yeah. he's going to win at least one. Yeah, he'd um, be silly not to. He put himself in contention a couple times. Definitely put himself in contention a couple times. Probably would have liked to have a couple of those 
back with some of the poor putting performances and some of those final rounds. But, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Winning now is very tough. You not only have to play very well, but you have to hope someone else doesn't play very well. Yeah, I think I don't think anybody saw it happening. I mean, but that's a crazy streak. That's a crazy streak. Ricky ended up keeping the streak going. Ricky's streak is yeah. The fact that Ricky's still chugging along is actually insane. At a very high, 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 high Be- level. Because it's it's only getting harder and harder and harder to win. Mm-hmm. Right, and so the fact that he's still able to rattle off wins. I mean, he's the second in my in my opinion. He's the second best player in the world still. I think behind Gannon, I think yeah. so. Yeah, I, think you I have mean, to who are you going to put above him? You can't. There's no he's way. Just, he's too. He's he's over. He's overall too consistent. And I think I think some of his performances this year was the best he's ever played ever. I think there are some people that have a higher ceiling than he does. Yeah. But I think overall, besides Gannon, he's. I don't he's know, the man. That consistent. guy goes low sometimes, though. Yeah, but like when AB's on, <laughs> when 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 Isaac is on too, like he's not yeah. missing gaps, he's not missing lines, he's no, not missing it's different putts. kind. It's a different kind of. It's a different style too. But back to the point, Macbeth. Yeah. Not Macbeth winning, not winning. Crazy. Macbeth is is insane. Now, do you ha- What do you think about next year? Do you hammer the the over? You got to hammer the over. Because here's here's the thing, you can't discredit the fact that he came off an injury, a a pretty ba- a pretty bad shoulder injury. His chances that, aren't worse, and so he had a slow start, right, and then caught stride and put himself in position on, mm-hmm. in a lot of tournaments to finish. So he made a lot of lead cards going down the stretch. Yeah, a lot of lead cards. Yeah. Slowed down towards the end, USCGC and um, the Tour Championship slowed down. I thought we were going to see him make a pretty big push. Uh, did he make the lead card at, at US? I don't think USCGC, so. USCGC? I don't yeah. believe so. I think second card, maybe? Okay. So he made a, he made a semi-good push there, but mm-hmm. he's too good. And he's, <laughs> you know, it's like when you're talking about the great, the greats, they're too stubborn. They're too stubborn for it to be just fine and for him to ride off into his, into the sunset. You know what I mean? Like that irks him. Uh, he's going to get a couple more. Yeah, I don't, I don't think because he didn't win last year, that means coming into this season, he has a better chance of winning or he has a worse chance no, of winning. No. I think, I think it's, I, I don't think his game has really changed all that much he can't put the last I mean, couple I'll say seasons I the mean, last what, couple seasons I mean, I mean you look at the eye test dude the guy's throwing it as good as he's giving himself crazy opportunities over and over and over and he's you can ask some shorties you could ask him you miss. could be like hey why didn't you win and he could be like my putting was either good from deep or or good from close and i didn't make any deep ones and you got to combine those two for a whole tournament yep. and he just didn't have it i mean i've seen some his putt doesn't look the same no, there is like a weird, there's like a weird hitch to it now, which is fine. But that if you got to stick with that for a few seasons, you know what I mean? And then mm. once he finds it, cause like I said, it's not like he was putting bad all over the place. Like he was hit. Like I think one of the tournaments, what was it? Uh, no, he, Estonia, had some good... he was just it, destroying the band yeah. over and over and over and over. And so it's just like these minor adjustments that he needs to make. And if he sticks with that stroke, he's great. He, mm. you, you don't got to worry about the mind there. You know what I mean? But you kind of got to find it. And you got to stick with it. So I hope he does. I hope he sticks with it and he doesn't fiddle with it anymore. You got you to gotta find a consistent stroke and then hammer it out for a couple of years. Yeah. Another story here. Biggest stories of the 2024 year. Ricky coming up short at the majors. We just talked about him probably being the second best player in the world having a pretty good season, still getting wins. He finishes fourth, third, second, and sixth at the majors this year. Man. And it's only going to get harder. Like the people, people don't act like it's going to get hard. It's going to get harder. Like He's going to think about it more and more and more yeah. every, every time. Man, when was the last time I won one of these? Everyone says I can't win one of these. I think if he does pop one off, I wouldn't be surprised if he got two. Like pretty quickly, like if he wins another one very quickly, but man, that first one again, I get, you know, he's already won some, but that first one again, after this long streak of not winning one, 
It's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough. There's so many guys that want their first two. How many does he have? I think he has nine majors, and he hasn't won in how long? Yeah. I, there's so many years. majors that I wouldn't even really consider a major, but yes. Um, he probably That's does not have the a point. Amount. He does. He hasn't won a big one in, in yeah seven years or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And not even – okay, so let's say – Say we'll take your point. Okay, so uh, um, horrible majors. He hasn't won one of those in seven years either. Yeah. So it kind of no, takes away from your point a little bit. But. It is crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> um, Missy winning the big money tournaments. I think that's just a storyline every year. It's, I think that just is what she is. You know what I mean? It is. It is crazy, man. <laughs> it is crazy that. You know, is it, is there something there? Is there something that she rises to the occasion on the big, big money tournaments and other people with the big money on the line, they kind of, you know, tense up or is it just simply coincidence? Like, yep, she is, she wins, she's going to win a lot. She's going to win a lot because she's good and she just happens to win these tournaments. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't surprise me because they're the biggest tournaments. And once you win at the biggest stage, it becomes easier and easier and easier. And that's what she's doing. Like, yeah, like Ricky, cool. for example, he wins the big one and then he almost wins it for three straight years. Yep. It becomes easier. Everybody else wants it. It's harder. He knows how to do it. She knows how to do it. And then it's done. Another big story for the 2024 season. Joey buckets is a big. absolute threat to win at any tournament. You know, he's like, he's like an Isaac. He really is just consistent, smooth, right down the middle. Uh, great storyline because it shows the rest of the field that you don't need the big distance. You don't need any of those things. You don't, he's not the greatest putter, you know, he's not, you know, he doesn't have the longest sidearm. He doesn't have the, the most power, but if you keep it smooth and you throw it down the middle and you make most of your putts, Here's what he did really great this year. Okay. He didn't do any of those other things great. What he did is at the right tournaments, he's put himself in position over and over and over again. And when you do that, you learn situationally how to get over the hump and started in Florida. Kept the momentum. I I remember thinking in Florida, like, okay, yeah, this guy's never going to have a good finish again, like the whole year. Yeah, Never it's a one and done like, type okay, of thing. Yeah, like, like, great start. He's He lives wherever he lives. Everybody else was rusty. Okay, I get it. Next tournament, lead guard. Next tournament, lead guard. Next tournament. You know what I mean? He had a little lull in there. And then he goes to Europe, finds it again, comes back, wins Idlewild. Very next tournament, world championships, lead guard. He did a great job of learning how to score out there with his game putting himself in position. And I think it's a, I think it's a great storyline to show the rest of the field. Like, Hey, why are you practicing in the field? Trying to throw 700 foot bombs. Mm -hmm. Like this guy's right down the middle. Doesn't, I don't, and this isn't a knock on him. This is a more of a compliment. Doesn't do anything great. What he does great is he scores. Yeah. And that's the most important thing in disc golf. Yeah. He, he scores very, very well. Next one is uh, Presnell shocking everyone winning a ch the Champions Cup. This is one of my favorite storylines of the year. And the reason is this dude, it, it's a man after my own heart, dude. He's out there grinding, playing 100 tournaments a season. My whole career, I've said this. You can't teach winning. You can't do it. You got to go out there and you have to, you have to learn. You have to win. It's a perfect example because this guy wins 14 tournaments a year, albeit small ones. Yep. Guess what? It's different pressure, but if you do it the right way and you put your mindset back into those other tournaments that you won, and I asked him right afterwards, I said, hey, did those things help? He's like, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, they helped. I know how to win. And uh, it's just good to see one of the grinders win one. You know what I mean? Out of yeah. nowhere, too. Yeah, and it wasn't even one of those two of where he was like, well, you know, I can just kind of coast in. Like, he had some serious things happen that final round. He lost his only putter. <laughs> like, that 
that right there could easily derail your entire round. A lot of people yeah. could just be like, oh my gosh, this is not my day. I'm not supposed to win. That does and, sound like something that happens at a C tier. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <rushing> water. <laughs> Butter God didn't mark the OB properly. But like down the stretch, he had to make the throws and he had to make the putts and he did. Yeah. He did. He answered the call. And I mean, for someone that has never won on tour to just show up and basically put everyone on on check that final round very impressive performance has to be uh discussed more i think in the future as well yeah um we're gonna get to this because this is actually related to another thing we'll talk about later but chris chris tatar officially hit a thousand rated this season so 2024 first year ever an fpo player ever crossed the thousand rated mark Say what you want about ratings. I, you guys are. We'll go a little bit more into ratings here in a few. Uh, once we get to this other topic, but you know that is a milestone for what for what it's worth in disc golf, and it's one that has never been crossed by an FPO player, and she was the first. Very cool. Uh, another storyline of the twenty twenty four season: baskets suck at catching discs. So lots and lots of talk about spit outs. This basket sucks. Uh, heck, even the Disc Golf Pro Tour had people, I guess, putting at baskets, tr- testing them out, which I don't know. That makes no sense. Why the heck are you doing that? Um, but yeah, baskets suck at catching discs, apparently. So that was a big storyline this year. Uh, another big storyline the Jedi spotter. The Jedi <laughs> spotter on hole 16 out at Emporia Country Club. Um, that got a lot of people talking. And uh, he'll never be forgotten. He'll never be forgotten. Evelina can be the worst putter in the field and still win a world title. That I mean, that's one of the bigger stories of the year. She couldn't make a putt inside of or outside of 10 feet, but she was throwing the disc so good. It didn't matter that I think, I think that will be something we look back on and be like, how the heck did she win that? And can you imagine what if Evelina comes back this season and figures something out? You know, like sometimes you see guys, maybe like what if she came back and was like going to the granny? Right, can't shoot free throws all off season. Was grinding on a granny shot, comes back in the first free throw. You see her bust out a granny. It's like, uh oh, like what? What are we gonna see if she does come back and all of a sudden her putt looks completely different, completely changed? It's no longer this weird hinge thing, and she's just draining putts. And she doesn't have to be a good circle two putter. It's just like be like an eighty to seventy percent C one X putter. Best advice I could give her, take some of the coin that you won, go find the best psychologist you possibly can, sports psychologist, and spend the whole off season working with that person. Mm. The best. Between the ears, huh? Absolutely. All right. Because she makes them sometimes, and if you can make them sometimes, then you can make them all the time. Bobby just said she comes out draining scubers. If she comes back and just starts <laughs> scubering every putt, oh man, that would be a story. Um, all right, a couple more here. Diver gate back. Uh, you remember this OTB oh, yeah. Madison Walker diver mm-hmm. jumps out of the water, grabs her disc out of the air. Never seen anything like that before. That was crazy. And then the final one here. Wow. Pros not being able to show up to their tea time on, t- uh, on time. That's that, a great one. That was a massive storyline at the beginning of the season. Yeah. People couldn't do it. it Just show tough. up. Show up at this time. No one, no one could figure it out. That was, that was crazy. I already forgot. I already forgot about it. Yeah, because it wasn't like an issue towards the end of the season because everyone was like, all right, this is that hard. But at the beginning of the season, man, People could not figure out how to show up to the tee times. It was crazy. You get in a you get in a rhythm though, and you've been doing disc golf your whole life, playing tournaments your whole life, and then a sure. new rule like this, it's a, it is a little difficult. I had one situation where I looked at the clock, I had twenty three seconds to get. Luckily, it was like 
a hundred <laughs> feet and I ran over there. But I was talking on the putting green, yeah. you know what I mean? Chatting it up, and I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't I look around my car. I'm like, oh shoot, run you over. Gotta there. A, uh, you gotta have a you gotta have either an alarm set. I already had or it, you it gotta have all. a caddy. Yeah, Brad because, was chatting too. Yeah, because a lot of these practice places um don't have like a clock. No. Some some of them do. So sometimes we'll have a clock over on like that training table, but a lot of them don't. And so like if you don't you know, if you don't have your phone handy or you don't have someone like looking at you, you know what you could do pretty easily. Have a nice little loudspeaker. Announce your people as once they tee off. Okay, next on the box in ten minutes. Blah 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 blah. That's not even bad idea because that also lets the spectators, the spectators know exactly. who's about to yeah. tee off. Yep. So I don't hate that. I know they do that out at uh, Emporia. Mm -hmm. They will do that out at Emporia. So I actually don't hate that idea. Yeah, but you can't hear them because you're t half mile away in Emporia. Yeah, I, I was just saying like it's a it is a nice thing too for the spectators to let them know like hey coming up yep. these players. I, I don't hate that. I don't hate that. 